Hello and welcome to this virtual session. We're glad you can join us today. Before we get started, there's a few housekeeping items we'd like to go over with you now. Firstly, you can resize the webinar windows to cater to your viewing preferences. You can maximise, minimise and drag the windows to your preferred viewing size. If you look at the bottom middle of your screen, you can click on the widgets that you'll need to get the most out of this virtual experience. Secondly, Microsoft specialists are on hand to answer your questions in real time. So feel free to type in your questions using the Q&A window and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Lastly, we've provided some additional resources for you to supplement your learning. You can access them by clicking on the links in this section. Without further ado, I'll hand over to our speakers. Hello everyone, welcome to this Microsoft 365 training day, building Microsoft Teams integrations and workflows. So in this event, we will cover a variety of topics split between two parts. In part one, we'll start with module one and two, implement Microsoft identity. Then we move to module three, work with Microsoft Graph. In part two, we start with module four, extend and customize SharePoint and wrap up with module five and six on extend Microsoft Teams. My name is Janavi Anturkar. I am a Microsoft technical trainer with a worldwide learning team in Microsoft. I've been working in IT industry for 20 years and working with Microsoft for eight years. I am a Microsoft certified trainer for past three years and I'll be your trainer for this event. Now it's time to start our first module. So we're going to start with our module one where we will learn about how we can get started with Microsoft identity, implement authentication and permissions and consent framework. So let's look at implementing Microsoft identity part one. So first of all, let's understand how we work with Microsoft identity platform. So for that, we need to get the overview of Microsoft identity platform. We need to learn what are the token types in Microsoft Identity Platform and also how we can register an application. So starting with overview of Microsoft Identity Platform, let's first understand why we need to use an identity provider. So when you are developing applications, there's almost always a need to authenticate and authorize your users. So authenticating is confirming the identity of a person or an application trying to access resources and authorization is granting permissions to that authenticated party. So one option you have is to maintain your own username password repository. However, there are many issues with that. So there are administrative overheads, you need to think about security, and there's no way your users could use single sign-on. So to simplify this, what you can do is offload the authentication and authorization to some identity provider. Then you will be able to use SSO, you will be able to use multi-factor authentication and authorization to um, implement the conditional access policies. So one such identity provider is Microsoft Azure Active Directory. So if you are already using Office 365 and Azure, then you have got Azure Active Directory set up. So Azure AD, it authenticates users and provides access tokens, which can be then used to access your web APIs and any other protected resources that you might have. So with the Azure AD, you get Microsoft Identity Platform, which allows developers to build applications that sign in different types of identities and get tokens to call secure APIs. It provides support to OAuth 2.0 and also OpenID Connect and provides open source libraries and support for other standard compliant libraries. So for developers, Microsoft Identity Platform, it offers seamless integration into innovations in identity and security space like password authentication. Then you can set up um, this authentication and conditional access and you don't need to implement such functionality yourself. Applications integrated with Microsoft Identity Platform natively take advantage of such innovations there. 
with Microsoft Identity Platform, you can write code once and reach any user. So you can build an app once and have it work across many platforms or build an app that functions as a client as well as as a resource application or API. So you can register your application through Azure portal and then there are client SDKs available for different platforms um, through Microsoft authentication library and you get an endpoint which implements these human readable scopes in accordance with the industry standards that you have got. So identity provider is where your users, your resources and your policies intersect within your organization. So as a developer, you want your application to be accessible with the highest number of users who should have access to it. And independent software vendors or ISVs, they are especially interested in the greatest reach in order to grow their businesses. Now you also need access to those resources the users need access to, including email and information about that user or information about themselves. So access to these resources is important in building your valuable solutions for your customers. A problem you need to address is how will all these users access their resources in a way that complies with whatever policies and security requirements the enterprise demands. So how do you make sure that your application allows the right uh, follows the right policies. Each enterprise will have a different point of view on what the policy should be. Now there, this is where an identity platform can help. The goal of Microsoft identity is to make it easy for you to address the largest number of users and the most valuable amount of information in secure way that satisfies the policies of that enterprise. So let's look at the overview of Microsoft identity. So in Microsoft identity, you have got your users. So Microsoft identity includes three solutions for addressing the largest number of users. You have got Azure AD. So these are your employees and your enterprise resources that you have got. Then you have got Azure AD B2B option where you can work with your partner. So these will be users who are in your partner's organization. And then you have got Azure AD B2C type of users, which means these can be customers or citizens. So you are able to work with users who are not really part of a specific organization, but you can reach general public in the sense. Okay, so you have got your different resources in the form of Microsoft Graph. So this is a gateway to your data that you have got in Microsoft Cloud. So from Office 365, then Enterprise Mobility and Security to Windows 10, Microsoft Graph enables um, developers to build applications that provide users access to their data and they can access their data with Microsoft Graph by authenticating and authorizing users with Microsoft Identity. And then policies, they have become um, complicated with users accessing resources from different networks and devices. So by relying on Microsoft identity to handle these complex policies, you don't have to implement the complex logic in your custom applications here. So Microsoft identity, it includes three solutions for addressing the largest number of users. And Microsoft is one of the largest identity providers. So Azure Active Directory manages a billion identities and billions of authentications per day, over 20 million organizations, including most Fortune 500 companies and you who use Azure Active Directory. So Microsoft identity offers you two additional solutions for your partners and customers. So you can make use of B2B. So Azure AD business to business or B2B enables an organization in Azure AD to securely share files and resources with another organization 
in um, Azure AD there. So here we can see we have got Contoso and then we have got Fabricam. So Contoso users here, they can access this content and then we have got the user who is in Fabricam domain here. So they are also able to access that because you can make use of this B2B feature in here. With Azure Active Directory B2C, you are able to provide customer facing apps and authentication for users who might be using maybe their Microsoft account or Google account or Facebook account or Twitter account. So using some kind of a social identity. So if you want to do that kind of authentication, you can do that with Azure Active Directory B2. C and you can set up your own branding, you can set up your own login experiences with the help of this Azure Active Directory. When you are interacting with Azure Active Directory and the applications that you are developing, you have got Microsoft Graph, which is the gateway to all your data in Microsoft Cloud. So from Office 365 to Enterprise Mobility and Security to Windows 10, Microsoft Graph enables developers to build applications which provide users access to their data. So developers and users, they can access their data with Microsoft Graph by authenticating and authorizing users with Microsoft Identity. The third element of identity is policies. So policies, they have become really complicated with users accessing resources from different networks and devices. The threat metrics, depending on how a user is accessing a resource, is complex. Now, various combinations of different users using different devices pose different type of risk to your organization. So Microsoft Identity is built to support this complex and dynamic threat metrics. One policy can be applied when a user is on a trusted corporate network using their company issued laptop, while another policy can be applied to the same user when they access the same resource from their home computer or their personal tablet or something. So by relying on Microsoft identity to handle these complex policies, you don't have to implement the complex logic in your custom applications. So a key decision you will make when registering an app is what type of accounts will it support? Okay, so Microsoft Identity Platform supports a single organization accounts. So these are the accounts within your tenant. So for example, they are your employees. So here um, we have got the single tenant option. And then we have got multi-tenants apps as well. So these are the accounts within your tenant as well as these are other Azure AD tenants. And you could also include in here your personal Microsoft account. So these are accounts like maybe if you have um, hotmail.com or uh, maybe outlook.com or you might have set up your personal Microsoft account using your Gmail or Yahoo account, then that's the personal Microsoft account we are talking here. So in any Azure AD directory, all the users and guests with work and school account from Microsoft can use your application or API. So this includes schools and businesses that use the Office 365. And you should use this option if your target audience is business or educational customers. So in any Azure AD plus personal accounts option, all the users with your work and school accounts, they'll be able to use and the personal account, which I talked about, which is your Hotmail and Outcook.com identities. If you're writing a business to consumer type of application, then you also sign in your user with the social identity. So here we have got B2C option, which you can make use of in, in this case. So we have got all these different options. You can do consumer, you can do enterprises. So B2B, B2C, we have got all these different options when it comes to setting up your identity with Azure Active Directory. So as a developer, when you build an application, you will ultimately request tokens from the identity provider. 
okay now in this case it's microsoft identity so that you can identify your user and authorize them to use an application with specific permissions so let's look at the different tokens that you are going to use in your applications the first type of token is an id token that is made available via microsoft identity support of the open id connect protocol OpenID extends OAuth 2.0 authorization, authorization protocol to use as an authentication protocol so that you can implement single sign-on using OAuth in your applications. It also introduces the concept of an ID token. So an ID token is a security token that allows the client to verify the identity of the user the ID token also gets basic profile information about the user. And because OpenID Connect extends OAuth 2.0, apps can securely acquire access tokens, which can be used to access resources that are secured by an authentication authorization server. The claims included within an ID token can be used for the user experience within your application as keys in a database and providing access to the client application. ID tokens for Microsoft Identity are a JSON, JSON web tokens, so JWT or JWT tokens. So these ID tokens consist of a header, payload and a signature. The header and the signature, they are used to verify the authenticity of the token, while the payload contains the information about the user requested by your client. Second type of token you have is the access token. So access token enable clients to securely call your APIs, which are protected APIs, protected by Azure AD, so applications should never inspect or validate an access token. Access token must only be passed to the API. Now access tokens, they are created based on the audience of the token, meaning the API that owns the scopes in that token there. So first token we saw is ID token, which are used to identify the users. And second token we have is access token used to authorize the different operations against an API for an application on behalf of that user. So your application may receive tokens on behalf of a user or directly from an application as if there is an automated service or daemon application. Okay, so applications can receive token on behalf of a user or directly from the application. Now these app only tokens indicate that this call is coming from an application and it doesn't have a user backing it. So these tokens, they are handled largely the same as user stake tokens with some differences in this scenario. So now let's look at how we can register an application. Now that we know that what are the basics of identity provider and what are tokens, we want to be able to register an application so that we can achieve this authentication and authorization. So for that, we will start by going to Azure Active Directory. So Azure Active Directory is where we are going to register our application. That is the control point for how you access the identity and the information it protects. So for an identity provider to know that a user has access to a particular app, both the user and the application must be registered with identity provider. Now, when you register your application with Azure AD, you are providing an identity configuration for your application that allows it to integrate with Azure AD. Once registered, the application will be given a GUID that the app shares with the Azure AD when, the, when it requests the tokens. The manifest gets created automatically by Microsoft Identity Platform during the app registration process. 
the application manifest it contains the definition of all the attributes of the application object in Microsoft Identity Platform. It also serves as a mechanism for updating the application object. Now the manifest is where you can record additional metadata for your application and the metadata includes things such as link to a logo, image, terms of use or privacy statement as well as defining group membership and role definitions and permissions. The scenarios where you'll need to edit app manifest to configure the app attribute are things like if you register the app as Azure AD multi-tenant and personal Microsoft accounts and you can't change the supported Microsoft accounts in the UI, you must then use the manifest editor to change the supported account type. If you need to define permissions and role that your app supports, you must modify the application manifest in that scenario. So when it comes to registering the application, you go to Azure AD and then you have to enter the name. You need to select your account type. So here you can see the different account options we have got available. And then you also need to enter your redirect URI in there and then click register. That's gonna register that application. Now, sometimes the meaning of the term application, it can be misunderstood when used in the context of Azure AD. So an application that has been integrated with Azure AD has implications that go beyond the software aspect. So application is frequently used as a conceptual term referring to not only the application software but also its Azure AD registration and the role in authentication and authorization conversations at runtime. So by definition, your application can function in three roles. So first, it can be a client role. So it's consuming a resource, okay? So in this scenario, it's like a consuming a resource. Then second, you have got a resource server role. So here it is exposing APIs to the client when it's a resource server role. And then third is it can be both. So it can be a client role or it can be a resource server role. So an OR 2.0 authorization grant flow defines the conversation protocol which allows the client resource to access or protect the resources data respectively. So when you register an Azure AD application in Azure portal, there are two objects created in your Azure AD tenant. First is you have got the application object and then you have got the service principal object. Okay, so consider the ob application object as the global representation of your application for use across all the tenants and the service principal as the local representation for use in a specific tenant. So a service principal must be created in each tenant where your application is being used, enabling it to establish an identity for sign in and or access to resources being secured by the tenant. So a single tenant application has got only one service principal in its home tenant created and consented for use during the application registration. A multi-tenant web application or an API also has a service principal created in each tenant where the user from that tenant has consented to use that particular API. So for example, here we can see we have got here a datum tenant, which is our tenant one. And then we have got other tenants like Contoso and then we have got Fabrica. And we have got this HR application that we have registered. So there are here three high level steps related to creation of the application object and each service principle. So first of all, both the application object here and the service principle 
they are created in the application's home tenant, which is the Adatum tenant here. And then when the Contoso and the Fabricam administrators complete the consent, a service principal object is created in their company's Azure AD tenant and assign the permissions that the administrator granted. So here we can see we have got the service principal created in here. Also note that the HR app, it could be configured or designed to allow consent by users for individual use also. Now the consumer tenants of the HR application, which is Contoso and Fabricam, each have their own service principal object. Each represents their use of an instance of the application at runtime, governed by the permissions which are consented by the respective administrator. So in this section now, we will learn how we can implement different OAuth 2.0 protocol grant types or flows in popular application types. So we will look at single page applications. We look at web apps and sign in users and call APIs. And we'll look at daemon and non-interactive apps as well. So let's start with single page applications. So web standards and modern browsers, they have advanced considerably in recent years to the point that developers can create sophisticated client-side applications. Now, these client-side applications, also known as single-page applications or SPAs, they can enable users to authenticate and obtain tokens from Microsoft Identity Platform that can be used to call secure web APIs. Now, many modern web applications, they are built as client-side SPAs written using JavaScript or a SPA framework like Angular or React. So these applications, they have traditionally used the OAuth 2.0 implicit flow to authenticate and obtain access token to connect to protected services. Now, the pattern used to implement the implicit flow in SPAs included the use of iframes and cookies for single sign-on in the browser. However, many modern browsers now block the third-party cookies, which breaks that implementation. So in addition, there are concerns about the visibility of access token when using the implicit grant flow. So for these reasons, using OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow for SPAs is recommended over using the implicit flow. So you would be going with authorization code flow there. The easiest way to use Microsoft Identity for your authentication and to obtain access tokens to authorize requests to secure endpoints in your single page applications is to use Microsoft Authentication Library for JavaScript or MSELF for JavaScript. So there are two versions. 1.0 only supports use of implicit flow. However, in July 2020, Microsoft released this 2.0. This supports the use of authorization code flow. So it is recommended that you use the msal.js 2.0 and make use of the authorization code flow rather than the implicit flow there. So in order for the single page application to use Microsoft Identity to enable users to authenticate and obtain access tokens for use with services such as Microsoft Graph, you must register a new app with Azure AD. And you can do this using the Azure AD Admin Center. So we can go to ad.portal.azure.com. So let me show you quickly. So we can go here and I'm going to zoom in. So you can see here we have got the ad.portal.azure.com. So this is where you need to go to to register your application. So in this demo, we are going to create a single page application and then we are going to see how we can make use of Microsoft identity in that application. So I'm going to open up my command prompt and I want to start by creating the application first. So 
so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna make use uh, the application that I'm creating is Node.js so I'm gonna just prepare all that is required so here we want this So we install the Node.js web server express and then here now I'm going to open up in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to say yes here. So you can see I have got some files here already. Now I want to create a new file in here. So I'm going to just right click, say new file and I'm going to call this my server.js and i have got the code so i'm just going to so this is my server.js file and then after that i'm also going to create another file which is index so here i'm gonna going to create index.html and then i have got the code here so this is the code that i'm gonna have in my index.html file so this is just welcome message and then it's making use of the same cell so here you can see it's creating public client application so we are going to make use of a public client application not a confidential client so your um, single page application they cannot be confidential client application they need to be public client application because they are the type of application which cannot be trusted to keep your secret safely so that's why it makes use of the public client application class in here okay so we have got that now we need to update this we need to add further code so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some code in here so this particular code here that i'm adding is for the user interface so there is a welcome message and then i have got the sign in and sign out options okay so let me just adjust this and then after that i want to add another function here to get the token and that's what i'm gonna do here okay so this particular function here is going to acquire the token and let me just adjust this code here okay so acquire token and get user emails okay so that's the code that we have got so this function attempts to retrieve the access token silently first then we can see here acquire token silent and then if that does not work then here acquire token pop-up so it's going to check if there is an error and then it will call this acquire token pop-up to get that pop-up request for sign in okay so we've got that now we want to add further code here to handle the redirect so here i'm gonna add this code so here what we are doing we are handling the redirect so let's adjust this a little bit and then so once the user is authenticated the code can submit a request to microsoft graph for current users information the acquire token and get user emails function passes that access token acquired from azure ad to get messages from microsoft graph function which we will add now so i'm gonna get the get my code for that function and then i'm gonna add it here Okay, so I've got that and let me just adjust this. So here, get messages from MS Graph. So this is where we are going to pass that token and you can see here, we've got the token. Now, we need to add some additional functions here to handle the response and handle the sign in and sign out. So we are going to add that code in here. Okay, so let me adjust this again. Uh, 
okay so here what we have got this is handle response um, function and then here we have got the sign in just do this here so pop up and then here we have got the sign out option okay so we have got the code ready for our application but we haven't yet configured our azure ad app so this is all the code we have got but in the azure ad we need to configure the app so let's now go to the azure portal and then we will create an application then we'll make use of that application in here so here i'm back in my azure portal so you can see here aad.portal.azure.com so that's where you need to go to and then this is our azure active directory when you scroll down here we have got this app registration so this is where we are going to go to create an application so we need to go here and we have to say new registration and then i need to give my application a name so i'm going to call it i uh, I D E N T identity um, SPA. So let's call it single page application. Now this section here that you see, this is where you decide what type of users you are going to authenticate. So we have got different options here. We can make use of our single tenant, which is Contoso tenant. And then you can do multi-tenant or you can do multi-tenant and personal Microsoft accounts. So you have got all these different options here we are going to choose the single tenant option and then i'm going to click register you could add here your redirect uri but i'm going to do it later okay so let's just create a register now this gives me an application id and tenant id so i'm going to need that application id and tenant id so i'm going to store it in a notepad so let me bring up my notepad here and let's copy this and I want to keep it in my notepad. So that's my app ID and I'm going to need my tenant ID as well. So let's keep that here. Okay, so we've got these two values. We're going to need them in the code. And next, what we want to do, we want to go to authentication. And here we are going to add the platform. And we are going to say that we want a single page application. So I'm going to select that. And once I select that, I need to enter here the URL of the application. So I'm going to add here the local host. And then we need to click configure to configure this. Now there is some other things like you can add access tokens and ID tokens um, for here. But for this scenario, we are not really going to do that. We are just going to redirect to this URL and then we are going to configure. So the application has been configured here. Now we wanna go back to our code and in the code we want to update this information so here you can see i have got the client id and then the authority and the redirect uri so let's get the app id from this so here we have got the app id let's copy that and then go here and then we have got the tenant id now for the authority what we need to do is we need to have this so https colon double slash login dot microsoft online dot com because that's where our request is going to go and then we need the tenant id because we need to make sure that our identity request the authentication request goes to this microsoft identity endpoint so this is the authority basically so let's go here and enter that and then we want our redirect uri so here we added localhost because we are going to learn, run it locally i'm just going to add that localhost so this is what we also added in the azure ad registration as well so let's save that and then we can run this application so i am going to open my terminal window okay so here let's say node 
server dot js so this is now listening on port 3007 now we want to test this so what i'm going to do i'm going to open it in in private window and we'll test it here okay so this shows me this message that i can sign in here now let's sign in and then i need to use uh, my account so i'm going to use this account here and i'm going to click next and then i can uh, enter my password and then i'm going to sign in and then you can see here that it is actually giving me this notification for the permission so this is the scopes so this particular application identity spa is looking for me to sign in and read my profile read the email and maintain access because that's the permission that's been given so i can say accept now because i'm an admin i can consent on behalf of my organization if i was to sign in using some other account i wouldn't get this option here to consent on behalf of the organization now because i am an admin i am able to do that and i can accept this okay so i have got here and then you can see here that it's showing me these messages which are coming from my email so that is how you can create a single page application and then use microsoft identity to sign in user and then get access to different resources from maybe microsoft graph or your other protected apis so let's now look at web apps that sign in users and call apis so adding authentication enables your web app to access limited profile information and customize the experience offered to your users so web apps authenticate a user in the web browser so in this scenario the web application directs the user to sign into microsoft identity now microsoft identity returns a sign in response through the user's browser which contains claims about the user in um identity token as a second phase you can also enable your application to call web apis on behalf of the signed in user there The OAuth 2.0 authorization code grant flow is a common flow when websites or custom applications leverage Azure AD as a federated authentication provider. When the application needs a user to sign in or needs an access token to act on their behalf, it redirects the user over to Azure AD's authorization endpoint to authenticate. the user signs in using their email and password and in turn azure ad redirects the user upon a successful sign in back to a specific url in the app so when azure ad redirects the user back to the web app it includes authorization code the authorization code is an uh, encoded string that only azure ad can read So here we have got the user so there is a pop up and then user completes that login and then it returns the authorization code here now the web app takes this authorization code which is valid for a short time and includes it in the request to azure ad token endpoint so here we have got the token endpoint so we have got that code which is going to azure ad to get the token now this time now in addition to the authorization code the request to the token endpoint includes the grant type parameter that tells the endpoint it's exchanging the authorization code to obtain access token on your behalf so a benefit of this flow is that the web app never sees your username and password all the authentication happens over uh to from azure ad and the application just gets the authorization code that's a result of that sign in process so this aspect of the auth code grant flow makes it very secure so here you can see the it returns an access code and a refresh token here which then can be used to call this web api 
that we have got here. So this is then going to validate the token and then return that secure data that the application is requesting on your behalf. In order for a web app to use Microsoft Identity to enable users to authenticate and obtain access tokens for use with services such as Microsoft Graph, you need to register a new app and this can be done again with the Azure, in the Azure AD portal. So when registering an app in the Azure AD, ensure the redirect URI of the app points to the callback of your web app. So for example, here we can see we have got the redirect URI. So we need to make sure that this is pointing to the redirect URI that your web app has got. So this URL must match the redirect URL provided by the app when the authentication process is started. The authorization code will be sent to this endpoint, which means you need to configure any authentication libraries and or middleware to listen to this endpoint to receive the authorization code. Sign out URL should also be specified. So the authentication libraries and the middleware deletes any cache tokens or other data that are only needed for signed in users. The web app will also need a client secret to log sign in with Azure AD to exchange the authorization code for an access token. Now there are three things you will need from the Azure AD app registrations. You're going to need the tenant ID. So this is the ID of the Azure Active Directory and then you have got the client ID, which is the unique auto generated app ID that you can get from your registration. And then you have got the client secret. So this is the secret you can create during your registration, which you can use in that authentication process. So while a secret key is used here for the purpose of simplicity, Microsoft recommends that production apps, they should use certificates with OAuth 2.0 authentication code grant flow. Secrets makes it simple, but it's for production app, it's always a good idea to keep it a certificate rather than secrets. The sign-in process is handled by redirecting the user to the Azure AD sign-in page. So this is set by default for you when you create a new ASP.NET Core web application. The sign-in process uses the values from the app settings.json file and the configuration defined in the earlier step setup to create the Azure AD URL to send the user to. So this URL specifies things like the Azure AD applications ID, the tenant and the scopes which are required by the web application. Now, when a user signs in to the Azure AD and is redirected back to the web application, the web app uses msal.net library to obtain that access token. And this is handled for you by the Microsoft.identity.web library. Next, we will talk about a daemon and non-interactive apps. So your application can acquire a token to call a web API on behalf of itself. So that is not on behalf of a user. Now this scenario is typically used when an app needs an access token, but doesn't want to work under the context of a user plus app permissions. Instead, the app needs its own permissions to work independently of a user. So these type of permissions, they are called as application permissions. So the applications like console apps, services, or web applications which need access to services but not in the context of the current user, those fall under this category. Some of the examples of use cases for your daemon apps is web applications that are used to provision or administer users or do batch processes in a directory, desktop applications like Windows service on Windows or daemon processes or Linux that do bad jobs or an operating system service running in the background 
web apis that need to manipulate directories not specific users so these kind of scenarios is where we can use these daemon apps another common case where non-daemon applications use clan credentials flow is when they need elevated permissions or privileges that a user doesn't have so for example when apps act on behalf of users they need to access web api or a sec uh, or a resource with their identity and not the user's identity such as accessing secrets from maybe azure key vault or an azure sql database um, for a cache so applications that acquire token for their own identities they are confidential client applications and these apps given that they access resources independently of a user they need to prove their identity so they are also rather sensitive apps which they need to be approved by azure active directory tenant admin and they have registered a secret which is application password or a certificate so they can make use of that um, with the azure ad and this secret is passed in during the call to azure ad to get the token so they have their own authentication credentials in order for a service or daemon app to use microsoft identity to enable users to authenticate and obtain access tokens for use with services like microsoft graph or your secure apis you must register a new app in azure ad again by going to the azure ad portal and then unlike the previous application types that we discussed you don't need to specify the redirect uri or sign out uri in this scenario in addition you don't need to enable the id token or access token for the implicit grant flow these don't apply to client credentials grant flow because these daemon applications they are going to make use of the client credential flow there one unique aspect to apps that use the client credentials grant flow is that their permissions must be defined ahead of time and also referred to as static permissions the daemon application can only request application permissions to apis which means they are not delegated permissions so application permissions they are defined on api permission page on the application registration now daemon application they require to have a tenant admin pre-consent the application calling the web api so this consent is provided in the same api permissions page so when i say that the application they need application permission what does that mean so there are actually two types of permissions you can have delegated permissions and then you can have application permissions now when you have got a user logging in then you are making use of the delegated permission so you are delegating the permission and then application permissions is where the application itself is logging in so in case of daemon apps it's the application logging in so that's why you are going to make use of the application permissions in here and in the demo we will see the difference like how we can set up these delegated and application permissions okay so let's look at permissions and consent framework so the microsoft identity platform implements the microsoft 2.0 authorization protocol now this protocol is a method that a third party app can access web hosted resources on behalf of a user now the web hosted resources they can define a set of permissions that you use to implement functionality in similar chunks smaller chunks so developers can leverage one of the two permission types supported by microsoft identity platform depending on the app scenario now in this section we are going to learn the different types of permissions and consent framework models for obtaining permissions from users to use them in apps so let's look at understanding permissions and the consent framework in microsoft identity platform 
Microsoft Identity Platform supports two types of permissions, delegated permissions and application permissions. Now, delegated permissions are used by apps that have a signed in user present. So these permissions, they are provided to the application by the user so the app can perform actions on their behalf. So this doesn't give permission to the app. Instead, the user is simply allowing the app to act on their behalf using their permission. Okay, so these are your delegated permissions. The application permissions, they are used by apps that run without a signed in user present. So you don't have a user in these kind of applications. So we are going to look at both the delegated and the application permissions in this lesson. Now, effective permissions are the permissions that your app will have when making requests to a target resource. So it's important to understand the difference between the delegated and application permissions that your app is granted and its effective permissions when making calls to the target resource. So effective permissions are the permissions that your app will have when making requests to the target resource. So it's important that we understand the difference between the app delegated permissions, the application permissions, and how effective permissions will be created based on that. So for delegated permissions, the effective permissions of your app are the intersection of the delegated permissions the app has been granted and the privileges of the currently signed in user. So here you have got the user and then you have got the app uh, permissions and then here we have got the effective permissions. So the app can never have more permissions other than the signed in user in this scenario. So within organizations, the privileges of the signed in user may be determined by policy or by membership in one or more administrator roles. So for example, assume your app has been granted, let's say user dot read write all. Okay, so read write all. All delegated, uh, so this per delegated permission. Now, this permission enables your app to be used to read and update the profile of every user in an organization. Now, if the signed in user is a global administrator, your app can update the profile of every user in the organization. However, if the signed in user isn't an administrator, then your app can only update the profile of the signed in user. So it can't update the profiles of the other users in the organization because the user that it has permission to act on behalf of does not have those permissions. So for application permissions, the effective permissions of your app will be the full level of privileges, which are Im implied by the permission. So for example, the app that has got user.readwrite.all permission can update the profile of every user in that organization because it's the app permissions that we have granted. There is no user involved in this scenario. So when building an app that uses Azure AD to provide sign-in and access tokens for secure endpoints, there are a few good practices that you should know. So only ask for permissions required for implemented functionality. So don't request user consent for permissions that you haven't yet implemented for your application. In addition, when requesting permission for app functionality, you should request list privileged access. For example, if an app analyzes a user's email but takes no action on the mailbox, you shouldn't request more permissive mail.readwrite when mail.read is only enough. So apps should gracefully handle scenarios where user doesn't grant consent to the app when permissions are requested. So in this case, where an app doesn't receive an access token with the required permissions, it should explain the situation to the user with options on how to remedy 
this issue. So in this demo, we are going to understand the permissions and the consent framework in Microsoft Identity Platform. So I have got the single page application that we created in the earlier demo. So we are going to use that same application. But in the Azure Active Directory, I'm going to create a different application. So let's first go through this application here. So we have got the server.js and then we have got index.html. Now in here, um, we are going to make use of public client application. And then you can scroll down here. We have got the user interface. And then if we scroll down further, we have got the handle response. And then we have got the sign in function. And we have got the sign out function in here. And we are going to acquire the token here. So we have got acquire token silent. And then if that doesn't work, then acquire token pop up. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So we have got the code. So now I'm going to register the application in Azure AD. So let's go to Azure AD and I'm going to go to application registrations. We will create a new registration. So let's call it identity SPA2 and same account. I'm going to register this. And I'll make a note of this app ID because we are going to need that. So here, let's keep it here. And then I want to go to authentication. I want to add platform single page application here. And I still want the local host. 3007 then I'm going to register that and then we'll go to add permissions so here API permissions then we have to say add permissions here and I'm going to choose Microsoft graph now here you can notice that there's delegated permissions and application permissions so when a user is signing in you want to use delegated permissions so I'm going to choose that and I want to be able to do this so mail dot read go here and select that and I'm going to add this permission in here so once I have added that permission I want to go back to my application and I just want to make sure that I have got the ID so this is not the correct ID so I'm going to update it with the one that we have created so this one and for the authority we have got the same login.microsoftonline.com slash tenant and then we have got the redirect uri in here so let's save this and then we can run it okay so let's go here and we want to start the application so it's listening on 3007 now let's log in so i'm going to go to the browser and again i'm going to open up in a new private window here and then let's go localhost so now here we can sign in now if i sign in using a user's identity then I get this prompt. Okay, so here you can see I have got this prompt. Now I'm not going to sign in, I'm just going to cancel this. And then I'm going to open it again. And next time, so I need to actually, hang on, I need to cancel this, let's close this, open up the browser again in in private. Now this time, I'm going to sign in using the admin account. So this is my admin account. I'm going to sign in here. And now you can see I have got this prompt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consent on behalf of organization and then for all these permissions and then I'm going to click accept. Okay, so I'm signed in now. So let me sign out and then we'll sign in with the other user. So let's sign out. 
and then I'm gonna go back to signing in with the other user so use other account and I have got this other account that I want to use and now you can see I didn't get the pop-up the reason for that is because as an admin initially when i got the pop-up i accepted it on behalf of all the users so i ticked that box and because i accepted it i did the consent for all the users so megan when she signs in she doesn't get the pop-up because admin has already given the consent so you don't have to then do it again if you are a user because admin has already accepted it for you okay so that's how your permissions and consent work so you assign the permission to the application now if the user hasn't given the consent or if the administrator hasn't consented on behalf of all users then the user is going to quit the pop-up but if the user has already consented or if the admin has consented on behalf of the user then the user will not really get that pop-up and they'll straight away go in the application and they'll be able to see the application results in there okay so that's how you can make use of permissions and consent in your application let's now look at delegated permissions and consent so Microsoft Identity Platform supports these two types of permissions that we saw, delegated and application permissions. Now delegated permissions, they are used by the apps that have a signed in user present. So for these apps, either the user or an administrator consent to the permissions that the app is requesting. And the app is then delegated permission to act as the signed in user when making calls to that target resource. Now, some delegated permissions, they can be consented to by non-administrative users, but some higher privileges permissions, they require admin users. So for example, a user can, can grant an app the delegated permission to user read. Okay, so this is just the user's information that enables the user of the app to sign in and then read the user's profile or maybe read dot use user dot read basic dot all. So that allows users of the app to read the basic profile information of all the users in the organization. Only administrator can grant user.read.all permission, which allows the user of the app to read the full profile information of the users, all the users in the organization. If the user has not previously granted the permission to the app or an administrator hasn't consented on behalf of all users in the organization, when a user signs in to an app, they are prompted with consent dialog. So when the user selects accept, the consent settings, they are saved and the user won't be prompted again. Now, there are two ways to define the permissions an app needs that drives what permissions are listed in the consent dialog. These two approaches are static consent and you can go with dynamic consent. With static consent, the permissions are defined in apps registration within the Azure AD admin center. So you can go to in the admin center, you have got this option here. So you can add the permission. So static consent approach is how Microsoft Identity 1.0 authorized endpoint worked. And all permissions an application used needed to be defined ahead of time when users signed in they would have to consent or to all the permission requests now this approach it enables administrators to consent on behalf of all the users in the organization and um, here we can see that this is adding these permissions now for developers migrating apps from the microsoft identity version 1.0 to version 2.0 endpoint microsoft introduced this dot 
default okay slash dot default scope so this is a built-in scope for every application that refers to static list of permissions configured on the application registration a scope of a scope value of graph.microsoft.com slash dot default is functionally the same as the version 1.0 endpoint where um, it was um, resource equal to graph.microsoft.com so in the 1.2 it was like this have so here um, graph dot microsoft.com this scope requests an access token with the scopes on microsoft graph that the application has registered for in the azure portal so this dot default scope should be used with the apps that use or 2.0 client credentials flow the other option to static consent is dynamic consent so this was introduced in the microsoft identity version 2.0 endpoint now with this option permissions don't need to be specified in the app registration in the azure ad admin center so each time the app requests an access token it specifies the permissions it needs in the scope property if the user hasn't already consented to these permissions they'll go through the consent experience for additional permissions so dynamic consent enables developers to only ask users for permissions the app needs at that particular time for example at sign in the app can request minimal profile information but later request additional permissions to do more advanced type of tasks Okay, let's look at application permissions and consent. So some high privilege permissions in Microsoft ecosystem, they can be set to admin restricted. So examples are when you want to read all users, so user.read.all, or when you want to write data to your organization's directory by using directory.readwrite.all, or when you want to read all groups in your organization directory by using group.read.all. So these kind of permissions, they need to be restricted because they are high privilege permissions. Although a consumer user might grant an application access to this kind of data, organizational users are restricted from granting access to the same set of sensitive company data. So if your application requests access to one of these permissions from an organizational user, the user receives an error that says that they are not authorized to consent to your app's permissions. So here you can see in this diagram and let me zoom in. So here you can see when you're assigning permissions, you will actually see this admin consent required. And then you have it says yes here. So these are the ones where user cannot assign the permission or grant the permission. The admin has to do that. And then here it says need admin approval. OK, so user will get a prompt like this. So then we have got this admin consent. So there's a dedicated admin consent endpoint that you can use if you would like to proactively request an administrator grant permission on behalf of the entire tenant. Using this endpoint is also necessary for requesting application permissions, which can cannot be requested using authorized endpoint. So here you can see admin consent in the URL. So this is going to that admin consent endpoint. Now this endpoint is also available by selecting the grant admin consent for um, button from the Azure AD admin center like we saw in the earlier screenshot here. And I'll show this in the demo when we do go to the demo portal. Now here you can see it says grant admin consent required yes and not granted and then we have got grant admin consent for contoso so this option you will get in the azure ad portal when you are registering your application and assigning permissions to that application 
So if you follow these steps, your app can request permissions for all the users in the tenant, including admin restricted scope. Okay, so this is a high privilege operation and should only be done if necessary for your scenario. So when you build an application that uses the admin consent endpoint, the app should have an experience that enables the admin to approve the app's permissions. So this page can be part of the app signup flow, part of the app settings, or it can be a dedicated connect flow. So in many cases, it makes sense for the app to show this connect view only after the user has signed in with work or uh, school account. So when you sign the user into your app, you can identify the organization to which the admin belongs before asking them to approve the necessary permissions. Although not strictly necessary, it can help to create a more intuitive experience for your organizational users. To sign the user in, follow you can follow the Microsoft Identity Platform um, tutorials and then learn how you can sign in the users and we have also done the demos for that. That concludes our part one of implement Microsoft identity. In this module, we learn about Microsoft identity platform, types of tokens in Microsoft identity, how we can register an app and implement authentication and authorization. We will now take a 10 minutes break. See you everyone back here in 10 minutes. Then we'll start with the second part of implement Microsoft identity topic.
Welcome back from the break, everyone. It's time to start module two. So in this module, we will learn how to secure custom APIs with Microsoft Identity and work with users and groups and roles in custom apps and APIs. So let's get started with module two. So let's first start with secure custom APIs with Microsoft Identity. Now, many solutions involve creating web APIs to expose functionality to different clients and consumers. Developers can secure these APIs using Microsoft Identity to ensure only approved apps can access the web APIs provided they have been granted the necessary permissions. So in this section, we'll learn how we can uh, secure the web API with Microsoft Identity and how to call it from another application. So let's start with overview of creating a sec and securing custom APIs with Microsoft Identity. Microsoft Identity can be used to secure a custom web API so only authenticated users and the applications can access it. So you can use custom web APIs to expose your line of business applications and systems that should be protected with a trustworthy identity platform like Microsoft Identity. So once an API has been secured by Microsoft Identity, you can enable users and apps to authenticate and access the web APIs through many different types of applications, including desktop or mobile or web or uh, daemon applications. So the Microsoft Identity Platform, it is a great solution for securing your API, especially when your users and their data are secured with Microsoft Identity. So for example, consider a scenario where a company in uh, using Office 365 sells categories of products to their customers. Now your inventory management system needs to allow certain employees read access to the products while others can create, edit, and discontinue products. So the inventory management system can be then developed to leverage multiple APIs from custom API to manage the product inventory to Microsoft Graph to look up different employees. Okay. Now, another option is to create a custom domain specific web API that abstracts the calls to these different APIs and line of business systems from the inventory management system developers. The custom web API should be secured and only grant some users limited permissions while other users can perform more privileged actions in that scenario. When securing an app with Microsoft Identity, you need to think about who will access the app. Will the users of your app be employees in your tenancy, partners in a business-to-business -business scenario, or customers in business-to-consumer scenario? Or is the primary use case one where you have created a web API secured using Microsoft Identity and that's primarily called the call by other applications. So these are going to be these terminators. So for now, we are focusing on the second option, which is terminator. So a terminator is an application or a service that communicates with your custom web API secured using Microsoft Identity. So there are two types of these terminator applications, one that acts on behalf of a user and one that acts on behalf of itself. So the first option on behalf of is when a user authenticates and then uses an application that will then make a request on behalf of the user to a second secure web API. In the second option, the application acts as a service or daemon where there's no user interaction. So in this case, the app acts as itself. The daemon apps authenticate with Microsoft Identity obtain an access token and include the token in authorization header value of each HTTP request in the web API. But before you can build applications that implement either the on behalf of or daemon scenarios, you need to first create 
and secure that web API. So here in this image we can see first of all we have got this application so the user is authentication uh, at authenticated application sends the access token a to the web api then request access token for the web api b providing the token a and client id and the secret and then request that access token and then call the web api B with the access token B in the authorization header and then it will return the data from that secure resource. So let's look at how we can create this Microsoft Identity Secure Web API. So securing a web API with Microsoft Identity that can be called by other applications involve two main tasks. First is you need to register and configure an Azure AD application. Then you are going to code the web API project and configure to support Microsoft Identity. So you create your new project and then you configure it to support that Microsoft Identity. To register an application, we go to Azure AD portal and then there we register the application where we are also going to define any custom permissions the web API is going to utilize. So these are the scopes for your API. You then will write the business logic within your web API to determine what is allowed or prohibited based on the scopes and the user identity listed in the access token received in the HTTP request. So each scope has a name and a description for the user consent and the admin consent. User consent is when a user grants an app permission to act on their behalf while admin consent is when global tenant administrator grants the permission on behalf of all users or an application. So after registering the app in Azure AD Admin Center, you make a copy of the tenant ID and the client ID of your app and then we will use these values when you create and configure the web API project. So we can see here in the screenshot, we get this app ID which is a client ID and then tenant ID which is our directory ID. So we need those values to be used when we are using in our application. So Microsoft Identity only returns blobs of text as access tokens. So your API should always validate the access tokens and ensure that they were provided by Microsoft Identity. So access tokens, they are signed with the private key and you can verify their authenticity with the matching public key. So Microsoft Identity provides libraries and middleware available for most platforms to simplify this process. Your custom API should also enforce permissions using the scopes included in the provided access tokens. So delegated permissions should never exceed what the signed in user is allowed to do. The next step is you're going to write the code for your web API project. So once the project is created, you will have to do a little configuration to associate the project with the registered Azure AD app. So after configuring the web API project with the registered Azure API AD app, you can then code the web API. So we start by creating a new project and then once the project is created, we associate the web API with the Azure AD by setting the tenant ID and the client ID in app settings.json. So you need your tenant ID and then you also need your app ID and these values will go in your app settings.json file. Next, use the existing your startup.cs to configure the authentication settings for your web API. So we are going to update this configure services method in the startup class. And this class, this is where we are going to specify that we want to make use of Azure AD for the authentication. 
so here we can see the code now the code uses microsoft.identity.web nuget package so i'm just gonna note it down here so microsoft dot identity dot web nuget package to configure the web application to use microsoft identity and the msal.net sdk finally we are going to use the verify user has any accepted scope so here you can see this method within the controllers action methods to verify the current request includes the necessary permission scope if it doesn't then it throws an error otherwise it will continue and execute execute that whatever desired result is in this demo we'll see how we can create a .NET core web api application and secure it with microsoft identity so i'm going to start by creating an application so for that i need to be in my azure active directory and then i go to app registrations and I'm going to click here, new app registration, and I'm going to give it a name. So let's call it product catalog API. And then we'll keep here single tenant. And then I'm going to click register. Now I need this application ID and the tenant ID later in my application. So we'll copy that later. So let's first then add here some scope. So expose an API is where we want to go to, to add the scope. So I'm going to go here, click add scope. We need to accept this. So we click save and continue. And then here I am going to add a scope. So I'm going to call it product dot read. And this one who can consent, I'm going to keep it admins and users. And then I'm going to give here read product information. I'm going to copy that and put it here as well for the users. And then here I'm going to say allows the app to read product information. And I'm also going to copy that, add it in here for the users as well. Keep it enabled and then add scope. Now the same thing I am going to do for two more scopes. So I'm going to add here uh, product.write. So product.write again for admins and users. And here we'll say write product information. Take that same message displayed to the users and say allows the app to write product information same thing should be done here and then add scope and then here i'm going to add category dot read and then we are going to say again admin and users and then here i'm going to say um read category information and same for the users and here say allows the app to read category information okay so copy that here paste here add scope so we've got three scopes which are for admins and users consent and then i'm going to add scope here which is going to be category dot right now this is only for admin consent okay so admins only and i'm going to say here um what's it category so right category information and then allows the app to write category information okay so let's add that so we have got our scopes also defined in here now what we want to do we want to create a dotnet core web application so we'll go to the command from here and then we'll say dotnet and then new web api 
and we want to give it a name so we'll call it product catalog and then we'll say it's single org okay so enter that's going to create our project so let's change to product catalog folder and then I need to add the package for Microsoft Identity. So .NET add package, Microsoft .identity .web. So this is so that we can configure Microsoft Identity with this application. Okay, so here we have the application added. Now I need to open it up in Visual Studio Code. Now this project is scaffolded with some uh, files. So there is this weather information here. So we don't need this. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm also going to delete this because we don't need this. We are going to create something totally new in here. So now we want to add models. So by convention, your .NET Core Web API project store model classes in a folder which is named as models. So we are going to create here some folders. So let's click here, new, and then I'm going to say models. And in this, I want to have a file which is for category. So category.cs. And then here, I'm going to add this code and save it so this is for the category id and the name and i also want a product dot cs so okay model for product dot cs and i have got the code here and i'm gonna save that now what i want to do is open in terminal so here we are going to in this particular application we are going to store sample data in memory while the app is running so the data is randomly generated when the app is started using a nuget package so for that we need to add this package okay i just want to make sure i'm in the collect folder here so dot net add package Okay, so we have added the package. Let's close this one. And now I want to add a new file called sample data where we will have some data there. So let's click here and say new file. I'm going to call it .cs and I'm going to add this here. So this is going to be my sample data. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we want to do, we want to update the startup.cs folder file. So let's go to startup.cs and we particularly want to update this. Okay, so here we want to initialize the sample data. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to add this code, which is going to do that. Now we want Web API controllers. So the .NET Core Web API project store controller classes in a folder, which is called as controllers. This is what we have here. So we want to then add here some files. So let's add first file, and this is called as categories controllers. So, so we add that, and then in this con this controller has the authorized attribute which forces the request to have a valid authorization error in the request so this is the code and here we have got verify user has any accepted scope method specifying the scope which is required to execute the action so here you can see write category dot read and category dot uh, uh, read so here we have got all these different scopes and then we have got so let's save this 
now we want to have another file so let me actually close some of these files and we'll come back to them later so here i want to add a new file i'm going to call it product controller.cs and this is my okay so here we have got the product.read product.write so we have got the product related scopes in there okay so now what we have is you have got a, a web api which is secured with microsoft identity and um, we can we have to also make sure that we have updated here our tenant id so before we run this application or anything we need to make sure that we have got the tenant id and things added so that we can take from here So this is my application ID, so I can take that from here and I need to enter that here. And then I also need my tenant ID in here. Now, because this is an API, once we run this, there's nothing to show, there's no UI, but this is how you will be able to secure that particular api with microsoft identity now let's see how to create and configure a web app so that it can access a secured web api the first step is to register a new azure ad app in azure ad admin center that will represent the web api or web application so an important part of the app registration is creation of the app secret. So when we go to Azure AD, we create this new registration here. And once your application is created, we want to be able to create that secret. So we click on the certificates and secret, and then we create the secret. So the important part is creation of that app secret. Now this secret along with the client ID of the app are used by the web application to authenticate with Microsoft identity when it needs uh, access token. So when it is requesting an access token. When apps that call web APIs are confidential client application, that's when they register a secret with the Azure AD. In a normal production scenario, instead of using secret, it's a good idea to use certificates, which makes it more secure. The next step is to create a web application that will allow the user to sign in and then access the secured web API. So here, for example, we create this new application and then we add this package, so identity.web and identity.web.ui so that we can make use of Microsoft identity in our web application. Next step, what we will do is we'll configure the web apps, controllers and views to use the authentication configuration that we